This is Professor Marcellus White from Harvard University here with you today. We are here in Auckland Art Gallery in New Zealand, observing a significant work by no other than Gottfried Lindauer. The piece we are looking at today is a renowned Tomato Waka Flocka, which is part of the Te Ao Maori exhibit in the museum. Well, actually, it is pronounced Tamati Waka Nene, but it does not surprise me that someone with such minimal studies of art could get that wrong. But I guess you are rather close. Stop, stop, stop. Who is this guy? I don't know. Well, um, the door was open, so I sort of just walked in. Security, get this dingus out of here. No, please. I love art. I took Mrs. Blade's art class. I know everything there is to know about art. I even brought my flashcards. Hey, don't touch me there. Ow, is that a taser? <laughs> Sorry about that. Now let's get back to the program. Sorry for the wait, but our special guest has now arrived here with us, the renowned Professor Aloha Snackbar from the University of Arts in London. Well, sorry, sorry for being late. I was coming in just as the security guards were rushing a rather crazy man out the door. Well, I wonder what that may have been about. Anyways, we're here in front of a painting of Tamati Wakanene. Tamati Wakanene was a part of the Maori, who are the indigenous people. Oh, I'm sorry. This museum is just rather tantalizing. He was a Rangatira, or chief, an important war leader. It is speculated that he was born around 1780 and died around 1871. During this time period, there was rapid change occurring in New Zealand. The first British missionaries and settlers were arriving and changing the Maori world forever, as they began altering customs and beliefs that the Maori people lived by. Nene serves as a wonderful example of the types of changes that occurred at this time, as he was one of the first converts to the Wesleyan faith. Choosing the name Tamati Waka after an English patron known as Thomas Walker. The painting is actually based off of a photograph that was taken of Nene. This piece's complex background is seen through the symbols and choices by the artist. Nene is portrayed as serene and at peace, showing how the artist had vast respect towards their culture. Nene himself is depicted with traditional tattoos on his face or a moko. Nene wears a kahu kiwi or a fine cloak that is covered in kiwi feathers. Aw, oh, damn! Bro. Nene wears a kau kiwi, or a fine cloak that is covered in kiwi feathers, and an earring of green stone, or pona ponamu. Both of these are prestigious tonga, or treasures. He is holding a hand weapon known as a tehawatua, which has feathers adorning its blade and a finely carved hand grip with the abalone or power eye. All of these mark him as a mono or one of high personal status. And now, our second special guest has arrived. Please welcome my colleague and good friend, Professor Ian Alvarez from Harvard University. Well, thank you for having me, Marcellus. It is quite a pleasure to start off with such a masterpiece. The painting is rather realistic three-dimensional and utilizes the contrast between light and shadow, causing the subjects to glow against the dark background. Gottfried was also known for outlining and tracing his works at the time, quickly sketching his subjects on his canvas before starting his original art piece. Wow, what a remarkable observation, but what is the purpose of this painting? Thank you, Professor. Well, the overall purpose of this painting was to commemorate Mr. Tamati Wakanene to his peers. It also exhibits many of the cultural traits within the actual culture, as it contains many cultural symbols and cultural rituals, such as the painting of the face or the cultural moko. Having these cultural symbols within the painting asserts the fact that Nene was indeed a dominant cultural leader within the culture of the Mare. The painting can be compared to that of an old man in military costume painted in 1631 by Rembrandt van Rijn. The two are similar in ways that they are both portraits of the subject. They also are in stance, which suggests confidence and humbleness. The subject of the paintings are each men who are dressed in official and high status clothing, which suggests they were of some importance, either in military or leadership. Lastly, the artist paid close attention to the intricate detail of of his painting, as the clothes and facial features of each subject are distinct, such as the wrinkles suggesting the old age of the man and the designs of the clothes of the man. Well, there are thousands of aspects of this painting that we could discuss all day long. However, we're only required to make this video four to five minutes long, so why be overachievers? 
It was great talking to you guys today. We'll catch you next time when we discuss another significant piece of art. Bye.